This is a video you've been waiting for a long time. Since I've been developing mostly mobile games over the past 5 years, I will dedicate a whole series on how to create a mobile game from scratch. We will use Unity and we will also implement features like analytics, ads monetization, in-app purchases, Google Play services and much much more. In other words, pretty much everything a mobile game has to offer, including the process of uploading it to Google Play, making it available worldwide for Android. At the end of the series, we will have a mini Pokemon-like turn-based game with just one area where you have random encounters with wild creatures. It should be interesting, especially if we manage to make it online so that you can fight your friends. If that sounds interesting, don't waste your time and gently click on the subscribe button to support the channel and keep the series alive. Helping me helps me to help you out, I guess. Enough talking around, let's get into the series. So obviously, the very first thing you will need is Unity Hub and the Unity version you prefer. The link to the website and every other site from now on will be available in the description. So this is the Unity download page where you should get the Unity Hub app. Once your download is done, open Unity Hub and you will see this window. Under installs, you can add the latest version of Unity to your console. In my case, it's the 2019.2.9f1 version. I have no problem with it and I really don't bother to upgrade it very soon. Our goal is to create a mobile game and to be specific, an Android game for Google Play. The game creation is really the same for publishing to iOS devices, with very small differences. So in case you are an iPhone developer, you can still follow along. On your installed version, make sure to add the right modules to Unity. Click on the three dots and add modules. A new window will pop up. Here, check the Android build support together with the Android SDK and NDK tools and also the OpenJDK. iOS build support is also available. I have also the WebGL and IL2 CPP installed in case I want to port my game to PC. It's really your choice to do so. Ok, the next thing on the list is Android Studio. Without this, creating Android games won't be possible and it is also needed to implement some of Google Play services to your game. Click on download, read through all of the terms and conditions and finish the process. We will come back to Android Studio in a future episode for more adjustments. Another important tool is the Oracle JDK. The only thing I know about it is that you are going to need it and that's all you have to know as well. I suggest you to use the version 8 and not some newer version. Don't ask me why, cause I feel very dumb at this. Just click on JDK download and choose the right version for your PC. I have a 64-bit operating system, so it makes sense to get this one. For now, we are done with the downloads and we can finally open up Unity. Go to Edit, Preferences and External Tools. Under the Android section, you can read something about JDK, SDK and NDK. Sounds familiar, right? If not, start the video all over, trust me. If you have downloaded these modules directly to Unity, as we saw before, you are all set up and everything should be checked. If not, add the modules. If you still don't want to, you can manually browse for the JDK and SDK we downloaded from the corresponding websites. The SDK refers to Android Studio and you have to know where you have installed it. Another thing you need to do, and don't be mad, but you will have to obey and do a lot of things in this tutorial. Being a game developer sucks, right? Well, probably. Go to your build settings and change the platform we are targeting to Android. Just look at how many platforms we can make a game for. Still, Android is our way to go. Let's finally create a new project. For that, click on File and New Project. We will work in a 2D environment and since we are making a turn-based Pokemon-like clone, I name it Pokegame. Best idea ever. So we have a brand new project open and of course the first thing to do is to change the platform to Android. We have no scripts yet so it should be a quick process. Let's make the game view a bit bigger and set the right resolution. I mostly use the 1920 by 1080 landscape resolution. 
but it is also a good idea to use the 16 by 9 ratio. It's mostly the case of all mobile devices. After that, it's time for some serious settings. Under File, Build Settings, click on Player Settings. At the Company section, write down your company name and in the product name your game's title. The default icon will be a spread which will be shown on the Play Store so that gamers can easily find and play your game. Now to the settings. Under Icon, you can even set new sprites for the game that will be shown on different devices. In the documentation of Unity, you can find out more about that. Next, the resolution. Leave everything as it is, but change the orientation you want for the app. I have checked the landscape left and right. The splash image is ok by its own, but we can do better. Click on the little plus to add the sprite as a logo. If you want, you can choose a sprite, but in my case, I will just leave it blank, so that the Unity logo will be shown at the bottom of the screen. The duration should also be at the lowest time. I also changed the background color to the darkest black, and it's done. Looks way better than the first version, don't you think? The other settings section. I did a lot of experimenting on this, and this setup is the most promising I came around. In the graphics API, I remove Vulkan and replace the Open Glass 3 with Open Glass 2. A little bit lower to the identification, you see com.savu.pokegame. You should have a similar name with your company in the middle and your game at the end. The version and the bundle version code must be increased every time a new port of the game makes its way to the Play Store, so 0.1 and 1 are a good start. For the minimum API level, you should also check the lowest available so that more players can play. Next, for the configuration, choose IL2CPP as the scripting vacant and the API compatibility level should be net standard too. Ok, this now is an important step. The architecture is ARM v7, but Google Play needs you to also have ARM64 in order to upload your game x86 is really not needed here. And this is all you need for now. We will change the publishing settings at some later point when it's actually time to publish. Unity is all set up for mobile development and whatever we are going to need in the future will be added step by step. In the next episode I am going to show you the sprites for the game and we will also talk a bit more about coding and the Unity canvas. And with that said, click on the subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified about the next episode of the mobile game dev series. This will be a lot of fun and I'm sure you will find a lot of useful tips and tricks to use. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Ciao!